Well, I mean, obviously, you know, one of the major reasons I left the sport at, at what should have, in theory, been sort of the pinnacle years of my career uh, was the doping issue. Um, just tired of dealing with it, didn't, um, you know, just didn't really believe in the culture anymore, as it were. Um, Doug, in a way, sort of like winning that team time trial in 2001. Um, Doug gave me uh, one, a little more belief in the sport, but two, he gave me a, a rarity in cycling, an investor that said at this point in time, now a rarity, I should say, a rarity in 2005 in cycling, an investor that said, listen, I understand that there are these problems in the sport, um, but we can overcome those and we're going to give you the resources to try to create a team that does it totally contrary to the culture. And if it fails, it fails. And I'm not going to be angry. If we get last place in every race, that's fine. Uh, but we, we should give this a shot. And, and I, you didn't see a lot of other you know, investors coming into the sport at that point in time putting sort of the idea of a clean team, the idea of ethos up here and you know, winning is sort of a, well, you know, if we do that, great. I mean, of course, he, he really believed we could. And, um, and he sort of started to make me believe, okay, you're right. Well, you know, look at this you know, 2001 in the team time trial. There were these specific things we did and it actually worked and, and we did win clean. And so maybe there's a way to replicate that in, in a bigger picture. You know, he made me believe, he gave me the resources to go out and try. And there wasn't any pressure if we failed in that mission. Uh, so that's what got me back in because I knew that if I came back in, I could do it my way, that I could build a team my way, that there wasn't, uh, that there wasn't going to be this overbearing pressure to start winning races. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, you know, I sort of believe in the inevitability of truth always coming out. And uh, I think, you know, ever since, gosh, I don't know, it was 2004 when I, you know, first started speaking with USADA and having a relationship there. And then um, ever, ever, ever since that point in time, ever since I realized uh, that there were people like myself and other people that were, that were out there sort of, you know, that were willing to take the hit in order to get the truth out there, um, that you know, that inevitably all of it would surface and that that was actually a really good thing. You know, of course, like I said, you, you know, you take the body blows, it's, it's not fun while it's going on. Um, but is that, is there a long-term gain there? Absolutely. Probably, you know, felt the pressure to scapegoat these riders, cut them loose. Why did you not do that? It's the wrong thing to do. It was absolutely the wrong thing. Uh, you know, they're guys who, you know, had the guts to come forward and, and say it like it was. Um, I think we'd be in a much better place in cycling if um, that was a, you know, that was a broader attitude. Uh, and so, you know, to, to sort of well, I mean, one time <coughs> I remember someone asking me, saying, well, you know, you, you, you need to protect the brand, right? And I said, well, what's more important, protecting the brand or, or doing what's right? And I think doing what's right in the end is, is, is more important. And, and that's the only way you get to a point where not only do you protect the brand, but that the sport and the team and the athletes are believable from the front to the back, not just putting on a facade to protect the brand. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the sports come a long way. You know, if, if I look at it compared to when I started in, you know, 94, uh, and through the bulk of my career, it has come a long way in professionalism. 
it's come a long way in transparency. It's come a long way in, in just the, the behind the scenes attitudes of the riders, the culture. Um, you know, it's a very, very different landscape than when I was a rider. And, um, you know, that's, that's, that's uh, thanks to a lot of people who made a lot of hard choices and, and the sport's in a much better place as a result of that. <clears throat> well, I mean, listen, you know, the sport is considerably more professional than it was when I started. Uh, I don't think, you know, if, if I picked up a new rider, I wouldn't, uh, I mean, I'd send him a plane ticket and it would be a round trip plane ticket. So, um, it, it, the sport's bigger, uh, but it's also, it's, you know, it's, it's also very competitive now. The, a lot of the sort of gentlemanly rules that existed back in the 80s and 90s, those are a little bit thrown out the door. I mean, it, now it's, it's a professional sport and the teams are, are built in almost like a militaristic fashion to, you know, to really go out and, and get the best out of the athletes. I think the leap of faith for the guys coming into the sport, that occurs when they're 15, 16, 17 years old, when they're, they're foregoing school, they're foregoing social life that we you know all had at that age I, mean, I you know I didn't go to my high school prom which like going to high school prom in the United States oh my gosh that's the that's the pinnacle of your life and I didn't go because of a bike race and I think that most of the guys that we have they have to make those same decisions they're they're foregoing a lot of stuff they're making tough choices in life to pursue a singular dream and that always requires a leap of faith